Hey everyone, I'm Dynamic and I'm the founder of Digital Fight Dynamics. We'd like to introduce the second episode of the Discover 350 development update series. In this episode, we'll be showcasing and discussing the 3D modeling aspect of development. We will soon show you all of the progress we've made, but before that, we'd like to elaborate on why the progress on the modeling side has been slow until now. Let's talk about the main factors, why 3D development has been slow and what we have done to remove or reduce them. Our work environment and structure have been quite loose and lacking compared to the system's development. We did not have a unified way to share large files and references, nor a way to assign tasks efficiently. As a result, these factors contributed to a bottleneck in the entire modeling team. We've taken on these shortcomings by assigning tasks to developers that have a lot of free time and motivation, as well as by discovering methods that allow modelers to share files quickly and freely, as well as refining things in the management aspect. Another difficulty we face is the fact that the A350 is Airbus's newest airplane. Therefore, finding accurate references is a challenge for us. This slows us down slightly since we're aiming to develop the most accurate replica of the A350 in consumer flight simulation. It is an issue that persists, but we have expanded our search for better references and have been successful for certain parts, and we are in a much better place than we were a year ago. These changes were made in February, and since then, our modeling team has been firing on all cylinders to progress alongside our system's development. Hi, my name is Marcel, and I'm currently the lead modeler here at Digital Flight Dynamics. And I'll be showing you the improvements we made to our 3D model in the last couple of months. I know that many of you have long been awaiting updates on our model, so let's get right into it. By the way, keep in mind that there are countless other new and improved parts that we will not touch on today because they are small and distributed across the aircraft. First of all, let's start off with the interior. Welcome to our improved A350 cockpit. As you might notice, when comparing it to the model we showed in the previous episode, there are quite a lot of changes and improvements. I have extended the cockpit walls and improved the accuracy of the panels. Parts were repositioned to represent the real aircraft more accurately and meet the correct dimensions. This was especially possible thanks to our wonderful providers who work with the A350 in real life as we were able to get measurements and close-up images for modeling and textures. Other parts that have improved significantly are the columns that have become realistically thick and more detailed. There have also been a lot of changes to the pedestal, main instrument panel and glare chute, which we will go into further detail now. One of our most needed improvements to the pedestal was a complete remodel of all major knob types. The knobs on the pedestal shown here are also all the types of knobs that you will find throughout the cockpit, excluding the glare sheet. Hence getting them right is very important to us. This is the new keyboard and cursor control unit that functions like a computer mouse hybrid in the A350. The KCCU is very essential for in-flight operations as it is used to access the MFD and the OIS. The modeling of this part was a combined effort from Sebastian and I. The buttons on the keyboard were also remodeled, and the characters were made to fit the curvature of the buttons. Now I will let Sebastian continue with the walkthrough of the remaining cockpits. Hi, my name is Sebastian, and I just recently joined the Digital Flight Dynamics 3D modeling team. Now. This was my first modeling task here, and I believe it has turned out quite well. The throttle was redone based on better close-up references. It has also received screws, fine details and accuracy improvements in multiple areas. Moving on to the RMP, also known as the Radio Management Panel. It is used for all the radio communications in the Airbus A350, and has also received a complete button, panel and knob overhaul. Now. Coming to one of my latest creations, the tray table and keyboard. This is a new addition to fill the previous gap. Keep in mind, this part is still very much work in progress. The decals, to be exact the keyboard characters, are missing and certain details still need to be added. But I would say it already looks pretty good. Now let's get to one of the most important tools in any Airbus cockpit, the side stick. 
Modelled by Lucius, this stick is a new addition to our cockpit and is one of the first steps in building and expanding the side consoles. The glare shield has also seen a lot of changes. The decals were finally added and all knobs and buttons were reworked or improved. All of the components and panels were adjusted in position according to new references. Screws have been replaced as well. One major thing that has yet to be done for the glass shield and the pedestal is the modeling of corresponding holes for buttons and knobs. This is intentional and will be done in the future once we are confident that all objects are located as accurately as possible. The last thing we will look at in the cockpit is the document holder. In my opinion this might actually be the most beautifully designed part of the A350 cockpit. Hello everybody, my name is Airman and I am a developer and modeler at Digital Flight Dynamics. Moving out of the cockpit now, let's discuss the exterior. Many of you have long awaited to see the exterior fuselage model of the A350X, so here it is. We have reworked the fuselage based on a model that Lucius had started. One of the biggest challenges for us with the A350 has been a very distinct nose shape. It is a very beautiful yet complex shape that is very hard to distill from images alone. In the last couple of months we understood a lot about the shape of the nose. There is still a lot to be learned to translate it into a very close replica of the real aircraft, but I can say that we are much closer than we were before. Another simple but important detail that was remade are the doors and the windows. As you might be able to tell, they are just hovering above the fuselage. They are not cut into the fuselage just yet, similar to the panels in the cockpit. We are still trying to validate the positioning and it will only become necessary when the cabin is modelled. And finally, the engine, or to be exact, the engine reverses. They have now been animated, albeit with temporary blocker doors. These are all the parts we can show today, however we still have to show you what these changes look like in the sim. That marks the end of the second episode of the Discover 350 series. If you would like to view previous progress updates or chat with others in our community, you can join our Discord server which will be linked below. 
If you are a developer interested in working with us on this project, you can fill out the application form which will be linked in the description below, as well as on our Discord server. Additionally, if you work on the A350 as an engineer, pilot, or maintenance crew and are interested in helping us, please contact us either via email or Discord, which again can be found in the description. Thank you for tuning in to this Discover 350 episode, and we'll see you in the next one.